What's going on guys? In this video, we are going to take a look at how to move files based on their file type. So sometimes you'll have folders that contain multiple types of files, uh, JPEGs, text files, log files, bat files, SH files, etc. So there are times where you want to filter out certain types of files and we'll learn how to do that in Python. So there are actually ways to do that in the command prompt or shell, bash, etc. But we will learn how to do that in Python. So you can extract the files and then you can run Python commands on those files if necessary. All right, so we'll start off with importing the necessary modules. So if you take a look at this first cell, you'll notice a, a new module that we haven't talked about before, and this is glob. So glob is going to allow us to filter out or extract a files based off a certain extension or based off a, a certain name. So that's the module we're going to focus on in this video. All right, so the first thing we need to do is import all the dependencies. So we have glob os uh, numpy, and from pill, we're going to import image. Now, some of these are just used to create a data set. So I created fake files and fake JPEGs so that we'll have a data set to move around. All right, so this next function, uh, make random files, is precisely doing what I just said a few seconds ago. So it's going to be creating fake text files and fake JPEGs. So you don't really need to worry too much about this function because all it's going to do is create random files, which I've already done. So this is just for uh, testing purposes where I remove a directory and I remake it. So I was just remaking files just for a couple of tests. So you don't need to worry about this as well. Now let's take a look at our data set. All right. So we have two different folders. One is going to be files and one is going to be destinations, our destination where we can actually potentially just move our files if necessary. So this is destination. It contains text files and images. So it contains two subfolders. And then we have our main source, which is files. So if you look at files, you have a bunch of images and a bunch of text files, 11 text files or 12 text files and 10 image files. So using that uh, earlier function, I created a bunch of these files. And not only that, we have a subfolder within files called files. And that has another subfolder called subfiles, which contains a bunch of text files. So we're going to learn how to extract either the text files or the images based on the glob module. All right, so that's the setup. Uh, once again, files, contains a bunch of mixed uh, JPEGs and text files. And then you have another files subfolder, which contains another subfolder subfiles, which contains subfiles, which are text files. All right. So with that said, let's go back to our Jupyter Notebook. And what we're going to do is actually, I don't need to run this cell because I've already created the files. So what I'll do is I'll actually comment out some of these. We don't need to make those random files. So now we're just saving the path of the earlier folders to rooter, which is going to just be the, uh, the root directory holding the subdirectories that we just saw, which are the files and destinations. So we have the rooter, and then we have a destination dir and a file dir. These are just paths to the folders we saw earlier. All right, so now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to extract the text files and the image files. All right, so let's go back. So we're currently in this directory. As you can see, our Jupyter Notebook, moving files based on file type, is in this directory, and we have access or direct access to the files directory. So we're going to directly access the files directory and try to extract all the images or try to extract all the text files. All right. So here we're going to use glob.glob. .glob. So we've imported glob just a few seconds ago. And what we're going to do is call the glob method of the imported glob. And we're going to be trying to access the text files first and the image files. Now let's take a closer look at this part of the code. You'll see that we have file followed by an asterisk followed by a text or dot text. All right, so the files represents the subfolder. So just a few seconds ago, I showed you that we have direct access to the uh, files directory, so we don't need to put in the full path to files. It's located within the same directory as this Jupyter Notebook. So we have files, and what we're trying to access within the files is all the text files. 
So this asterisk represents a wild card. And it's basically saying, get me all the files with whatever names. So the asterisk is representing all types of names, but it has to end with .txt. So once again, the asterisk is just representing any character or any sets of characters, but it has to end with .txt. So we're explicitly writing .txt because we want the uh, file names to end with .txt. So once again, files is the subdirectory we want to look at. And then we have an asterisk, which is going to represent any characters or any amount of characters. Then the dot text is what the any amount of characters has to end with. So asterisks dot text will pull out all of the text files and asterisk dot jpg will pull out all of the images. Now let's run this. All right. So we've saved all of the file names to files and all of the image names to images. And now what we're going to do is print out files and print out images. And all these print statements is just trying to make it a little fancier, I guess. So I tried to make the output a little easier to understand. So I added a few sort of fancy print statements. Okay. So first we have the files command, files asterisk.txt. And this is what it pulled out. Files test zero, test one, test 10. As you can see, they're all text files. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So files was successfully able to extract all of the text files. Now you have the JPEG or the images, and you'll see that the images a variable was able to extract all of the images or JPEGs. So uh, image one, image two, etc. So we have successfully been able to extract the type of files that we want. All right, now there's a problem. We forgot the, the file subdirectory. So we were able to extract all of these, but we didn't recursively go down the directories and pull out the rest of the text files, so the subfiles. So they're kind of hidden within subdirectories or sub subdirectories. So we have files, then we have subfiles, and, and then we finally have the text files. So to do that, we need a recursive version of glob. And it's possible since Python 3.5. So hopefully you guys are at least using Python 3.5, 3.6, or even 3.7 and keeping up to date with this stuff because um, some of the functions or methods that I'll use will be only available in some of these later versions of Python. All right, so recursively grab subfolders as well. All right, so in this case, what we want to do is we want to pull out those text files from the subfolders as well. And the way we do that is using the recursive functionality of glob. So let's take a look at the code. You'll see that files is now followed by asterisk, followed by the text file. So basically what we're saying with this uh, double asterisk is that we want you to look at all the subfolders. So not just the direct folders, we want you to look at all the subfolders and extract all the text files. So the double asterisk will look through files, will look through any subfolders and extract the text files. Now let's take a look. I'm going to actually turn off this recursive and I want to show you guys exactly what happens when we turn off our recursive equals true. So we're going to get this out and let's take a look at this. So we get an empty list back. Now why do we get an empty list back? Because we're not doing any recursion. We're just basically saying we want you to look through files and then any subfolders and if those subfolders have any text files. So keep that in mind. Files, then any subfolders. Remember, this is a wildcard, a double wildcard. But let's take a look at files. So let's go back. So we're going to files. So remember, we skip all this because we're going to files and then we're only looking at subdirectories. So we're going to skip all of this, going to files, which is the subdirectory. Now within the subdirectory, there are no text files. There's actually another subdirectory. So as you can see, if we don't use recursive equals true, it's going to be problematic because it doesn't actually go through all the layers. So it will specifically do what you asked it to do, which is go one layer deep and look for any text files. But in our case, there are no text files. There's actually another subdirectory. So let's go back. All right. So now what we're going to do is recursive equals true. And this will actually allow us to go through all the layers. So basically, it's going to go through files, extract all the text files. Then it'll go through the subdirectories, extract all the text files. And if there are even more subdirectories, it'll extract all the text files from there as well. 
So let's just run this now. And now let's run uh, cell number seven. So as you can see, it's able to extract everything. Test zero, one, 10, 11, two, three, blah, 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 until nine. And then if you look past nine, you'll see subfiles, zero, subfiles one, subfiles two. So basically with using recursive equals true, it will go through all the directories. So the root directory will extract all the text files, then all the subdirectories and any subdirectories within these subdirectories. So this recursive equals true is very, very useful. All right, so that was extracting the subdirectories or extracting any amount of subdirectories using recursive equals true. Now I have one more. You can also filter based on file names as well. So let's take a look here. All right. If you look above, actually, look at the output, you'll see that we have several test files starting with the digit one. So you'll see a files test underscore one, then you have files test underscore one zero, files test underscore one one. So what we want to do is extract anything that starts with test underscore one. And that's what we're going to do in this situation here. All right. Let me just fix that up. So basically what we're doing is, in this case, not just the extension, but we want the file name to start with test underscore one. And then the asterisk is going to represent any amount of characters, but it has to end with dot txt. So if you look at this file name, you'll see that there's a couple of explicit requirements that we're forcing glob to adhere to. So you have a test underscore one and dot text. So we want our file names to contain test underscore one have a bunch of wild characters, any characters, but it also has to end with .txt. So test underscore one and .txt are the requirements that glob has to follow or adhere to. All right, so in this case, we're going to be pulling out those text files which follow these requirements. If I print this, you'll see, I forgot to print out actually, files. So let me just print out files and it is empty. And why is it empty? Let's see. We need to add a R. Yes, okay. So I need to create a raw string. See this backslash T, Python will think it's a special character as opposed to backslash T. So the original backslash T is just uh, backslash T E S T, but Python will think it's backslash T, which is a tab. So that's why I needed to create a raw string, which sort of forgets about or which inactivates the special effects of some of these uh, string combinations like backslash n, backslash t, etc. So with that said, we were successfully able to extract all the test files or text files that were starting with test underscore one. So test underscore one, test underscore one zero, and test underscore one one. Now the moving part, once you're able to extract these files, uh, the moving part is very simple. Let me see. So all you need to do is uh, import shuttle. Sorry about the keyboard noise, but shuttle dot move and what you want to move. So let's see. For our situation, what we're going to do is for file and files shuttle dot move and we're going to move file to destination. Now I think this should work. Let's see. We do have destination. Yes, and I think within destination, so let's see, within destination we have images and text files. So what we're going to do is, we'll just do os.app.join destination and text files. And this should work. Destination, a uh, destination dir. All right, so I think this should move it. Let's see. All right, so now let's take a look at destination text files, and here we go. So we move the files. All right, if you guys don't know enough about Shuttle, take a look at my other video where I go a lot more deeper into how to move and copy files in Python. So this was a quick introduction to the Glob module. Now, if you guys have any questions or any videos you guys would like me to make on file management, uh, let me know. I really enjoy uh, creating videos on file management. So if there are any videos that you would like me to create, just let me know. All right. With that said, I'll see you guys next time.